in the midst of a teaching series, a message series of the disciplines of the disciple. What disciplines do we all need to have to make Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, to, to be the followers that Christ wants us to be, to uh, move beyond uh, just um, having Christ as our Savior, which is very important because it brings us eternal life and into this relationship with Jesus. But we want, Jesus wants us to move much beyond that and to grow in our love for him and what he wants us to do with the life he's given us. And that's what we're talking about. Now today, we're gonna to talk about the discipline of ministering to others. I usually wait to near the end of this teaching about spiritual disciplines to talk about ministering or serving, but I thought that uh, it would be very appropriate to insert it here in our list of disciplines as we just completed one of our largest ministry serving projects of the year at Fairview. You were here when Frank stood up and and share with you about the oyster roast yesterday. And I hope you were able to either attend and eat some oysters, or you are able to come <clears throat> and serve some. But uh, I am always amazed when, even though I've been now for three or four years, when you walk into the oyster roast that first moment on that Saturday, and the fairgrounds are just filled, the tents are filled with people there uh, eating and fellowshipping and enjoying themselves and all for a wonderful recipient that we feel God has called us to help walk in their life with for a short while. And uh, I was able to talk to the family yesterday. I'm sure many of y'all were able to say hello <clears throat> to the mom and dad of, of this little baby who, who's still in the uh, intensive care and struggles every day. Uh, and as Frank said, we're, we're going to try to help them ongoing, even though the next few weeks and a month or so, we'll still get donations come in. And we're going to, all of that goes to help this little child. But we do this in the name of Christ. And we do this because something in our hearts, uh, something deep within us tells us, encourages us, that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to help others, and especially others who are less fortunate than we. And uh, remember that all of these disciplines are to keep, help us to keep Christ the center of our life. And I'm convinced that you cannot keep Christ at the center of your life with ha without having a heart to minister to others. It's just one of the spiritual disciplines that Jesus asked us to do. Ministering to others is the cross-bearing ministry. It's, it's, what is meant, it's what Jesus meant by uh, carrying your cross daily. You deny yourselves and carry your cross daily to be his disciple. And one way we carry our cross, which is, to imitate Jesus carrying his cross because he ministered to us on that day at Calvary, we are to minister to other people. So as each of us continues to ministry and we continue to serve others, let me give you three truths, three truths about ministering to others in Christ's name and how and why we need to have this discipline in our life. I hope I can share with you uh, the why you have this need, this urge, this compassion for others. Because the Bible and the New Testament especially talks about it. First of all, ministering to others, I feel, is the fuel to spiritual growth. It is the fuel to spiritual growth. Now, Bible study and prayer are certainly the food and the fuel that we have to get started in deepening our spiritual life. But, you know, we can only go so deep if we stop there. 
if we're the, the greatest uh, prayers, the greatest, the greatest of those who live the word and read the word and know the word, but if we stop there and never take that out to others, we're missing a great step in our spiritual discipline life. Jesus wants us to go further than that. Not to go further, it's kind of like, um, uh, I love to play golf, you know that, but it would be kind of like me reading about golf and going to the driving range and practicing golf all the time, but never going on the course to play. I, I'm never really a golfer till I get out there and humiliate myself on the golf course and try to play it. Or it's like, um, you know, it's like for you to study on all the books on how to have a healthy relationship with other people. You know, how to get along with people, um, how to be nice to people, how to talk and how to have a, a good conversation and how to draw people towards you and you towards others. But you stop there, then you never get out of your house or out of your cocoon and meet any people and actually are with anybody. It doesn't make sense. And that's the way it is with ministering to others and spiritual growth. All the study, all the prayer, all the worship in here as we gather as the body of Christ doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless we take it out there and minister to others in Christ. And it's when we begin to act upon our growing knowledge and our growing faith in Jesus that our discipleship and allowing Christ to be the Lord of our lives really begins to take off. Uh, I thought of, of when I was a kid, I, I was a, a, a young boy and a young teenager in the really beginnings of and the height of the space age. You know, we were sending rockets everywhere and especially rockets to the moon. And back then it was a simulation on TV. But I always remember loving to see, you know, you could watch the actual rocket, you know, lift off, right, from Cape Canaveral. And that was always amazing. But then that rocket would get up so high in space. Now, any uh, rocket engineers here, I'm going to embarrass myself. But it gets up into space and it starts heading towards the moon. And at some point, the second engine, there's another blast off. There's a second engine that fires. It's, it's not the engine that catapulted it off into space, but that falls off. This other engine fires and it catapults it towards its target, the moon. And it's got to have that second blast. It's got to have that second energy. How am I doing, Mike? Okay, okay. Mike's my rocket engineer. So, uh, you know, anyway, that's close. But it's a great illustration. And uh, the, the Ill, the, the, what I want to say is it, that is the same way that it is with ministering to others and being on mission for Jesus. It gives you that second boost. It gets you blasted off again towards your target, towards what Christ, who Christ wants you to be. I know that's the way it was with my spiritual journey growing up. Uh, I was just so fortunate that about the time in my latter high school years, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, I really got connected with still one of my great spiritual mentors. He's still... Uh, still living and still so healthy and still doing missions and ministry all of the time. But I used to start going with him. In fact, I worked with him as a summer missionary from my high school years through my college years. And we worked and shared Christ with the mentally challenged, with the blind, the deaf, the impoverished. Uh, we did little vacation Bible school camps and in trailer parks all over the peninsula and we did all of this in the name of the Lord and looking back that ignited my spiritual growth that ignited my spiritual life and it was during this time I can't tell you an exact moment but it was during these last couple of years of high school that I firmly heard the call of God to full-time Christian service 
and I've never looked back since. I've been catapulted towards that target of increasing my walk with the Lord. Now, Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus says this. He says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If you give, it's given back. Paul says in Romans 15, verses 1 and 2, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. You see, the natural flow of our hearts as we draw closer to God is our desire to minister to others. That's one reason that you want to do it. That's the reason that things like the Oyster Roast and other ministry and mission projects that you are involved with through Fairview and through your Christian walk mean so much. Listen uh, to how uh, it this makes us greater disciples, how this makes us feel, what it does for us to minister to others. I'm going to take you back to the Old Testament, to Isaiah chapter 58 and verses 10 and 11. And Isaiah says this about ministering to others. And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your light will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good, to build them up. Yes, ministering to others is a fuel for greater spiritual growth. Second of all, I want you to remember that ministering to others is just spiritual common sense. It's just spiritual common sense to do it. One cannot read the Gospels, one cannot read the New Testament and not see that ministering and caring for others is what the disciple of Christ is supposed to be doing. If ministering to others is, is not one of our disciplines, the Spirit will let us know that our lives are not just right. We'll know that something's missing, something's out of balance, Something is just not allowing us to go to the next level. Maybe the most common sense book of the Bible is the letter of James in the New Testament. This great letter, it was uh, the last book of the Bible deemed as divinely inspired. The last book to get in. I'm not sure what took them so long because it's a great book. But James is an in-your-face common sense book and when we talk about ministering to others here's the com spiritual common sense James says James chapter 2 verses 14 through 19 what good is it my brothers and sisters if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds can such faith save them suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. 
faith and ministry go together, don't they? If you don't have a heart for others, then you need to take a next step in your faith. Your faith will urge you to get involved in helping others. And if that desire is not in your heart, or, or maybe something like prejudice keeps you from service, you need to go back to living in the Word and prayer to examine yourself. I was in a church, uh, and we were having a, uh, a men's meeting, deciding what next project we were going to do. And it was decided there was one of those families connected to our church, we've all had them, who just were constantly in trouble. Uh, constantly living on the financial edge. Constantly they, they lived in a home or different homes that they would find, and they just weren't up to the standards of most of our homes. Bathrooms weren't working, uh, floors were rotted, roofs were leaking, and the church had helped them before. And um, so the men were talking about taking a couple of Saturdays and going and helping this family. They had to have a bathroom redone. And um, they were talking about it, getting plans. One guy stood up and just said, well, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I ain't helping that family again. Last time we helped them, nobody said thank you. Uh, last time we helped them and in two months, they were just right back where they started. They didn't appreciate it. Uh, I'm not helping them again. They can get out there and get jobs and help themselves, and I don't see them trying to do that. I ain't doing it. You know, I think I was a new pastor there. My, my, my jaw was like on the floor. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and I just, you know, I try to think of the nicest way to say it, but I just said, well, such and such, that, that's fine. You know, all of us have our, uh, what the Lord's telling us to do, but y'all set a Saturday and I'll be there because I'm helping because God tells us to help others. He doesn't have help to ask why. He doesn't ask us to judge. He doesn't ask us to do a deep background check on those that are poor, on those that need help. And so if somehow there's some type of prejudice in your heart that just there's a group of people you don't want to help, you don't want to serve in Jesus' name, you got to go back. You're not ready for that step yet. you got to go back to living in the Word. you got to go back to prayer till God gets your heart where it needs to be. And Jesus says it like this in the sixth chapter of Luke. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those for whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend and expect nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the the Holy Spirit, our spiritual conscience, confirms in us in spiritual common sense that we're to minister to others in Jesus' name. Period. Third, finally, ministering to others, therefore, is a command. It's a command from Jesus. A new commandment I give to you, Jesus said, that you love one another just as I have loved you you also are to love one another and by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another Jesus said in Luke 12 sell your possessions and give to the needy provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys and in Luke 10 behold a lawyer stood up to put him to the test saying teacher 
what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you've answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. You see, for the saved, the ministry to others is not an option. It's a command from our Lord. If we truly desire to be growing disciples of Jesus, we have just got to obey. There's no other way. Do you have that desire in your heart for serving others? Are you ministering for Christ somewhere, in some way? It's real easy to do. It's something like the oyster roast. And I think that's a great entry-level mission and ministry. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of us surrounding each other. We're serving, and people are enjoying what we give. But I want you to go deeper and risk more uh, and minister to those that maybe you've never ministered before. Minister to those one-on-one that God calls you to minister to. Minister to those where you may not get a thank you or smile. Uh, And don't feel the need to, to say, well, you know, I'm doing this and you should be grateful. Do this because Jesus has loved you. And he's commanded you to do it. In so many places, Fairview offers you so many places to minister and to be on mission. I encourage you to get involved. I searched and searched this week. I found some great concluding illustrations that really could have fit the end of this message. Some things from my life, some things I found other people said. But I kept going back. I couldn't find a greater concluding illustration to drive home Christ's command to us to minister and to serve others than this passage of Jesus himself. So let this drive this home for us today. Matthew 25, or just a part of it, talking about what will happen in glory when we see Jesus face to face. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, And all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When do we see you a stranger and invite you in, or or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Can't have a more powerful illustration than that, can we? What Christ expects from us. As Jesus said to the lawyer, let us all go and do likewise. And let's have that extra boost towards the heavens. We're going to pray. Our praise team's going to come up and have a closing song. And it's a time for you to contemplate where you are with the Lord I'll be here for a few minutes maybe you want to come and and for believers baptism you believed in Jesus you have not been followed his command to be baptized by immersion I'll be here if you want to do that 
or uh, maybe where you stand, you just need to um, just pray to the Lord to give you a heart for loving others and uh, for serving others and ministering to others. Maybe you want to join Fairview, make this your church home, and work along with us sinners here to try to do our best in Jesus' name. But the invitation's open, or maybe just to sing and glory in the Lord. Um, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for um, saving us. <clears throat> thank you for calling us, Lord Jesus, to be your body. To What a great privilege to minister in your name. What a great privilege to be able to pick up our crosses and follow you. As we bear our cross for others, Lord, may we not receive one thank you. May need, we may not receive one bit of glory, but it may it all go to you, for you are worthy. In your name we pray, amen.